Good afternoon and welcome to NYFP. On this Friday, we are seeing the major U.S. stock averages back in the red. Joining me now is Peter Cardillo of Rockwell Global Capital. Peter, good afternoon. Thanks for joining me today. My pleasure. Well, since the last time we spoke, we've seen a global equity market sell-off that came on the heels of uh, Bernanke's comments. Uh, also, there were fears about a credit crunch taking place in China. But uh, for the time being, we are seeing those fears being alleviated. So do you maintain your outlook that we'll continue to see a trading range for equities? Yes, I do. And in fact, you know, uh, I don't really think what ha what's happening today is going to mean very much because I think this um, trading day is basically uh, going to see the ind indices uh, move uh, in and out of the plus and minus column for most of the day. And that's due to uh, the uh, options expiration. But next week, I think, is when we get the real test for the markets. And um, I kind of suspect that... Uh, uh, you know that uh, the Bernanke uh, effect and uh, uh, the China effect is going to begin to wane and so people will be looking at valuations and uh, realizing that the market is now oversold and I think what happened yesterday was more to do with China than uh, the uh, uh, Federal Reserve uh, and Mr. Bernanke you know the markets um, uh, uh, wanted to be prepared and Mr. Bernanke did offer that the last time we spoke we said that he would probably outline uh, and be more transparent and he did and uh, so I, I really think what happened here was a combination of, uh, of two factors uh, the market finally realized that um, that uh, uh, stimulants will eventually end and that the economy is probably improving and indeed, we saw lots of volatility, not across the, uh, not only across equity markets, but bond markets and currency markets as well as commodities. And indeed, heading into next week, we will continue to keep an eye on uh, data releases, but we also have plenty of uh, Fed speeches. But before we get to that, I do want to ask you about what came out of the Eurogroup uh, Finance Minister's meeting. Uh, what did you make of that? Well, I think, you know, it's, uh, again, they're taking the right steps, and uh, uh, it, it, it is no question that... Uh, uh, you know, there needs to be one voice in, in the banking industry, especially uh, if you look at the, the banking situation in Spain. And I think they're getting close to, uh, to, to moving to us that way. Um, and, of course, you know, in terms of economic data, uh, if you look at the PMI, the Eurozone PMI, while it stays in contraction mode, it actually is showing that there's some life uh, creeping back within the eurozone, uh, so you know uh, I think that uh, um, that that the steps implemented uh, and that that uh, future steps that they're going to take um, are going to be uh, positive in terms of uh, of the eurozone economic uh, for the eurozone economic activity. And Peter, last but not least, uh, next week we get so many Fed speeches on top of a key U.S. economic data releases. Do you think we can get anything out of substance uh, next week? Well, you know, I think I, I think we'll probably begin to see more and more Fed speakers. Uh, uh, perhaps maybe sing to the tune of what Mr. Bollard did uh, just today, saying that he thought maybe Bernanke should have waited. I, I really don't agree with that, uh, because I think that the markets wanted uh, clarity, and uh, they got it. Unfortunately, I think it uh, uh, may have been uh, at the wrong time, because it uh, coincided with what, what was happening in China. Uh, and so that uh, is probably the real culprit why we saw uh, yields back up uh, um, in a very uh, uh, vivacious way. Um, if you look at the 10-year note, uh, um, the last time I checked the markets, uh, they were inching up towards that 2.5% uh, uh, range. And, of course, uh, that is a, a, a dangerous uh, da danger zone for uh, for interest rates and possibly even for the stock market. But I kind of think that, um, you know, again, um, I, I don't think what happens today is significant, but what happens next week, uh, we should see uh, the market begin to stabilize. I think the S&P is going to hold its 1575, 1600 um, range, and, uh, you know, confidence needs to be uh, rebuild and I think that'll slowly come and we'll get back into a trading range for the summer again I stick to that one to three percent and uh, you know uh, 
hopefully uh, we can see volatility inch down a bit. Well, Peter, there is no way to get away from an uh, unwinding of easy money, so I guess there's no perfect time for making any announcements regarding tapering. So thank you so much for joining me today. My pleasure.